Welcome to episode 60 of our Road to Unicum. Today we review the WZ-132A. This is the tier 9 Chinese light tank in World of Tanks. And we're going to take a look at a pair of tier 10 battles. The first is Malinovka, and then we'll also look at the new 1.0 version of Fjords, which saw some pretty significant changes. As always, you know, in the countdown, I'm communicating to my team as far as where I'm going to be spotting. Now, I think that the western or northern spawn on this map is a pretty significant advantage. There are some really good bush lines that can you can use just south of the lake, so I'm going to show you where those are. In my opinion, the south side doesn't have as good of a spotting area. Now, notice I'm cutting to the left here instead of driving straight to the bushes, and so I'm kind of uh, doing a like an L shape, like drive to the left and then cut back hard to the right. The reason why I do this, if you drive directly from where I spawn, diagonally across and you go across open ground, you can get spotted as you're trying to reach this bush, which can really hamper your ability to get to where you want to be. It only takes like an extra four or five seconds of driving, but as you can see, I've got already like five tanks lit. So there's plenty of things for our team to shoot at. Now, you know, one of the things that can be pretty rough about being a light tank driver, and we've got a ton of people in position to fire. The, the UDAS, three TDs by our spawn, the Schwartz, uh, but so far they've only made one damaging shot. Okay, there you go. There's a second damaging shot. But, you know, your job as a light tank driver is to spot and get intel about where the enemy is and, you know, whether or not your team is in position to take advantage of your spotting, knows where to aim in terms of weak spots and has good hand-eye coordination those are things that you can't really control right but certainly you know where i am this is a very effective spotting position so i can keep that t92 lit who is trying to spot our tanks um, in their approach to the hill and you know obviously because i'm so close to some of these enemy tanks only about two and a half to three squares away if I fire and they have a direct line of sight to me, I will likely get spotted. And it's too early in the game since there's still 14 enemy tanks alive for me to try to use my gun if I'm passive spotting this far up. Now, it's, it's pretty common. Like, we've lost our WZ-132. He was, you know, overexposing himself, not really choosing a very smart line. And that's very common. You know, I talk about this so much, especially in my, you know, 39-minute video about how to you know play light tanks correctly and incorrectly right that was back in episode 41 but a lot of light tank drivers they run around like a chicken with their head cut off that's not smart what i'm doing is very smart and what's really nice about this bush line notice i'm obviously parallel with the bush line so if you were to spin the camera in any direction what you're going to not see is any parts of my hull now there was a recent video that wargaming's put out that talked about the spotting mechanics. What's really interesting is that um, you can get spotted um, on a couple points on your turret and then on the front, back, left and right of your tank in the very middle uh, section, you can get, if that part of your tank is visible, uh, you can get spotted. But ironically, your gun won't get you spotted, the gun barrel, um, and the corners of your tank where the tracks are won't get you spotted. Yet I'm having to resist the urge to fire here. Thankfully, you know, now I'm up to like 4K spotting damage. So, you know, originally our team really wasn't doing too much in terms of, you know, putting on some damage, but now they are. And then, you know, they have a, their Scorpion's trying to push up here and flank. And like, if there were fewer tanks on the map, I would take that shot, but it's, I'm not quite ready to yet. I like what Schwartz is doing here. That's a good idea um, since he was able, basically like their Rheinmetall Borsig and their Amex 1390, they can't play as aggressively on that hill where they are over by F7 as they would like. And the reason why is because I'm spotting every time they come up on that hill, like the their Udez tried to go up there and just got wrecked. And again, I'm just having to resist the temptation to click on that left mouse button. But I did like what our Schwartz did. It can be uh, dangerous to cross that channel, like over by the D6 over to the F7 area. But if you get underneath your opponents, it can be very... Uh, powerful position, but in this case, you know, he was a little bit too aggressive in terms of exposing himself, especially since their leopard was applying some crossfire on him. Now, notice that both sides have thinned out a bit, and I go ahead and take the shot here. And as soon as I fire, I'm going to take the conservative assumption that I've been spotted, and then after three seconds, it turns out that I'm not. Since I'm not spotted, there's no reason for me not to go back to where I was. And again, because I've been spotting as effectively as I have been, the Rheinmetall Borsig and the AMX 1390 have not been picking up on that hill. And this is such a distance from the Waffentrager, and he is moving. That Remember, his Binox, if he's got him equipped, won't have kicked in, nor will his camo net. So I go ahead and risk taking the shot 
on the Waffentrager because that's a you know danger dangerous tank with a big gun. The main problem for me is their Object 430 is now pushing up, so it's only a matter of time if he keeps pushing up where he's going to be so close that even though you know I've got you know pretty good camo as a light tank, that it's not going to matter. But I'm going to stay here as long as I can and you know, try to keep our team keep providing intelligence, and then I'm going to go ahead and take a shot on the. T57 heavy there. Now, you know, that is a far shot. His side was a little bit exposed. And I do manage to track him, which would be great if, you know, one of our tanks was able to take a shot at him. The 430 is still pushing up on me, so it's time for me to bail. Now, what I could do is cut to the left here. Now, part of the problem is the Scorpion and Leopard, if I'm not careful, I'm going to get squeezed between the 430 and the Leopard and Scorpion. So what I'm going to do, notice I'm keeping those bushes physically between me and the 430 to delay the time it's going to take before I get spotted. I do get spotted and then wow, I get shot twice in the move, which is a little unlucky for me, um, especially at the distance where that T57 Heavy was. Uh, but, you know, in this case, I'd rather eat the damage and spring myself free than to get stuck in the middle, you know, kind of in the area where the R. Ryan Mattel Borsig is, because he's now basically pinned between tanks from two directions. Now, the first priority is to get rid of this 430, right? So, already finishes him off. Where the 430 was, if he gets too close, you know, he'll spot a Ferdinand, which looks like he did, and get him killed. Now, our tanks that are on hill, you notice, like, they've we've won hill, but they haven't been able to push down from it. And I actually was not a fan at all of what our, our batch had already was doing. He got, he's... I, it's it's okay where he is right now, and a little bit he's going to push up so far that he can get spotted. If he gets counter spotted, he's going to get hit by their arty. But you know, it didn't give him time. You got to kind of figure out where you need to be, right? So I'm going to leave their T57 heavy and their Rheinmetall Borsig alone for now because they're not threatening anybody. Uh, what is a danger is if their Leopard and Scorpion were to push along the one line, they could potentially get close enough where they can spot our arty, or if they reach the lake over by A1, they can get underneath us. So. You know, as much as possible, I'm staying below ridges so I cannot physically be spotted. And then when I do get up on a ridge, I take a position where I'm behind soft cover, right? And again, this is all about, you know, being a ninja, not getting spotted, uh, but being in a place which is relevant to my team. Now I've got to be patient. The thing about our tail, so you can see some of our tanks have pulled off hill a little bit. Uh, our Arty is now the foremost tank on the hill, which he shouldn't be. Uh, but what happened was our tanks won the top of hill. They, we won A0. Part of the problem is that if you don't have sufficient vision and you try to push down the zero line, down from hill, their 1390, which was down there, which was there for a while, and their Rheinmetall Borsig will outspot anyone, right? Because they'll be sitting in bushes, which means they'll have the first spot advantage, which means they'll have the first shot advantage, which means they're already can fire on those targets. So you'll see this happen where the heavies will win a brawling area, but then to cross open ground, they just get smacked. And thankfully, our baby mouse didn't push down the hill. If he did do that, he would have likely died, and we're going to need his help later. All right, so we got rid of their 1390, we got rid of their leopard. My shot didn't land, which is a bummer, but that's too bad. Now, I'm going to be careful here. Because I took some earlier damage, you know, I am one shottable based on the 490 alpha of the scorpion. And you know, this game requires not just good decision making and good awareness, which it certainly does, and a knowledge of the maps, but you need to know the, t you know, the tanks that you're fighting in terms of their alpha, their gun handling characteristics, their mobility, etc. Um, that really wasn't such a smart, smart thing, what our friendly player was doing. And part of the reason why is because the Scorpion has flanking fire. If I go up and spot the T57 Heavy and I get counter spotted, their Scorpion's going to have flanking fire on me. And I know, you know, our guys are saying, asking me to go and push up on and spot that Scorpion. But if the Scorpion one shots me, or I get caught out in the open, um, and they're already luckily hits me, I can die. Now, if I'm on this hill here where the trees are, the T57 pokes um, and I'm behind soft cover, I will outspot him and he will likely not spot me, but I can't use my gun. Now, reading the map, however, I see a different opportunity. At any given point in time for your light tank, you got to think either offensively or defensively, where are the best places for me to go? Right? I could push down the one line, but if I push too far down the one line, I'm going th across open ground. The Scorpion G might be sitting in a bush by this point, which means he'll get the first spot in for shot advantage, and there's a good chance I'll die. Um, a good Another route where you could go would be down where the T57 Heavy is. Normally you could go down there along the ditch where our uh, uh, Schwartz went earlier, right? Um, I think it's that our Mutz or Schwartz. Um, anyway. Um, 
you could push down that way and get underneath the Rheinmetall Borsig. But because the T57 Heavy is there and because he's an autoloader with four shells, it would be a terrible mistake. So the only really viable place that I can push is down the zero line, right? And I'm communicating this, you can see me pinging the map to tell people, hey, you all got to get ready, right? So what's, what's interesting is their tanks, their non-RDs are in positions where they're going to have various spotting lanes, right? So there isn't like an obvious place where I can push aside from the zero line, right? Where I can approach them pretty closely and hopefully get deep before I get spotted. Now the main risk here, like I said, is that tank destroyer is, he's now got me spotted. I don't know where he is. And one of their RDs fires, which means only one of their RD remaining um, has a shell in the near term, right? But the main thing is I need to get close enough where I can get that TD lit and hopefully not die. This is the part about playing a light tank where at some point, you know, in games, you're gonna, there's, there's an element of risk, right? And, you know, in that case there, I'm trying to zigzag, I'm driving at full speed, the Rheinmetall misses his shot, and this is super unfortunate. I should have moved further up to the rock to make sure that that tank destroyer didn't have a line of fire on me. He could have killed me there. Um, I did get splashed and tracked by uh, the M53, which means that he's going to be reloading, which means he is zero threat to me, and I can go ahead and just drive up to him and flank him without any risk. And so, you know, the only tank who could theoretically shoot me at this point would be their other arty, but he was hightailing it out of here, probably not in a position to fire back. And um, it's possible that, by the way, their Scorpion could have come back to their base, you know, and he could have pushed east along the K lane, but. You know, I don't think so. Where, where the Scorpion was, he was actually in a pretty good position. And my guess, he would probably push along the one lane from where he is. But this is part of kind of the thinking process. You know, this, the game is a constant decision engine. That's why I like World of Tanks. It's a very, you know, it's a very cerebral game where good decisions and bad decisions are rewarded accordingly. And no, really, there's no rush. We have a four tank to two tank advantage. There are already on the run. He's not going to be able to sit down and really fire. Um, I've done very little damage personally in this match, only 900 damage, but you know, have already racked up 6,700 in spotting, and you know that's really helping us to win the match. Just you know the the spotting, correct spotting play, and you know as I talked about in episode 41, uh, a lot of light tank drivers don't understand how to play light tanks properly. Right? They're either over aggressive and overexpose themselves, and like I said, they drive around like a chicken with its head cut off. Or they sit back and they, they try to be too snipey campy, right? Which means that when they do that, they're not out in front of their team, their, their other tanks. Their friendly tanks are going to get out spotted and shot at. And then their team will get behind and then the light tank will be left with very few friends around. You don't want to be in that situation. In this case, like, take your time. We've got two and a half minutes. Worst come to worst. Two of us can two cap, right? Even for that matter, the German heavy tank and just solo cap by himself. Uh, we don't now know where the Scorpion, that was a little bit of a surprise. You know, I would have assumed, you know, three times out of four, uh, the Udez beats the Scorpion because Udez has ninja camo, right? And the Scorpion is a very, very big target. But, you know, what I want to do is get close enough here. I wanted to go straight to these bushes. Notice, whenever I take lines in the open, I'm trying to drive so that they're bushes. In this case, uh, the Scorpion was coming wide, which is smart of him. Right, so the, the unfortunate thing about this is I don't necessarily have the alpha to one shot him, uh, but because I got him lit, our already was able to get a nice shot on him, which stunned his crew, which you know, really affects the accuracy of your gun. So he dirt shot and missed me, and was able to finish him off. So almost 7,000 spotting damage, and you know I've been wanting to show how to spot from the north spawn of Malinovka for quite some time. So you got to got to see how that plays and the the power of that southern that bush line on the south side of the lake. Now we're going to take a look at another battle, uh, the Fjords map, because unlike Malinovka, Fjords saw some huge changes in 1.0. And by the way, I really love the uh, visual customization system that the game put into place a, a few patches back. It really allows for a lot of fun emblems and inscriptions, and you can you know earn things like mastery badges, which can then be applied by getting an uh, ace tanker, and then you can apply them to any tank. All right, so fjords. The the big change in this map is the center area and that hill, right around the E5, E6, F6 area. Now that can be a really effective 
place to go if you can get up on the hill. You can see the, there's a really narrow entrance to that area. I find it's most effective if you're in something like a brawly medium or something that has some armor or if I were going up there with some friends. Now right now we've got a good push of tanks going up to the zero line which I think is a fine thing. Uh, but most notice that most of the tank destroyers on our team have set up shop south of, east of me over by F7, right? F8. And so if I were to try to make that hill over by F5, I would be by myself. Now, I had a big shot there. My Mattel Borsig has the big gun. Now, what happened is I got spotted um, by their Bad Chat 12T. And this is going to sound counterintuitive. I was driving up along the road north-south, but while I'm driving along the road, people to the west can't see me, but if someone is directly north of me, they could spot me. So the, like, what would have been smarter and safer for me to do if I want to drive north along this bush line is to actually not drive on the road, but drive in the middle of the bushes, right? Because I was driving on the road, the Bat Chat 12T was able to see me north south, kind of like I see him here, right? But imagine if I were further to the right of where I just was, he would have spotted me. The, the tough thing about this map is that Basically, if you go along the edges, like I was doing with this Bat Chat 12T is, you can be very exposed to fire. And in this case, the Bat Chat 12T, he doesn't really have a good exit lane unless he turns on head straight north. But if he does that, he's gonna be, he's gonna get shot at. Now, he, granted, he shouldn't have stayed where he was, but my, my point being is that if you're spotting along this, this road on the seven line, uh, you have to be really careful because it's very, very exposed. Okay, again, as I said earlier, I'm not gonna go to E5, E6, uh, because I'm solo, if I go there, for example, and run into their Lorraine 40T or some other tank, you know, I'm going to get my face pushed in and I can't brawl. Now, if the Panther 2, for example, had gone there, had gone with me, or one of our turreted tank destroyers, for example, it's a good place to go, right? Because what you can do is peek up onto that, you know, on the top of the hill around, you know, E5, and you can spot their back line. But I can't safely go, like, say the 40T, Lorraine 40T, this is exactly what I was talking about. Had I gone to that brawling area, he could have, you know, potentially clipped me out or left me with like 50 hit points, right? In that case, he was overspotting, overexposing himself. He probably shouldn't have done it. Peeking up a little bit to get some intel on where our tanks are is a smart thing. And notice this time around, I'm moving up just directly through the bushes. I don't have to worry about so much in this case, but there's a chance that the Skoda T50s that are to the north of me could spot me if I'm where that my Rhymetown Borsic is moving up here. So the, the weird thing about this map with the changes in 1.0, which is part of the reason I don't like the changes, is you can't really play the middle of the map. There's basically this massive, you know, kill zone in the middle of the map where you can't drive through it. And there's very little meaning for hardcover on this eastern 7 line, right? So it basically encourages people to camp like our T28 prod, WZ, and Striv 103 are doing, right? And I, I find that this makes the map kind of stale in terms of play. Now, you may be wondering why I didn't go to the A lane, right? Um, I think it's a good place to go if you're in a brawly tank, right? Especially if you've got good gun depression and a good turret. But the problem is this tank has neither of those things, nor is there meaningful soft cover so I can play vision games like I'm doing here. So, the, you know, this is kind of a really, in my opinion, limited map to play in terms of light tanks. and. What's really unfortunate for us is you can see the only tank we've got left on that southern peninsula is a tier 8 medium tank, and he is facing multiple tanks, including a tier 10 uh, Jagdpanzer E100, which is, is just going to push his face in. And this is one of those cases where, you know, there isn't a lot that I could do. I certainly can't go south and engage those, you know, those monsters because I will get wrecked. Uh, there hasn't been a time where I felt comfortable pushing up to that hill, right? And some people, I, I know it's like some people have much more of a bias toward um, higher risk tolerance than I do, right? And I, what I don't like doing is putting myself in a position early to mid game where I might get caught out. I've done that plenty of times and died and then had to sit here and watch other people play. Uh, in this case, we've clearly lost south. We are clearly losing north. So now we've lost both flanks and I can't push middle because it's a massive kill zone and so I'm doing the only thing that I can do which is retreat, retreating to the one place which offers a combination of both meaningful hard cover and soft cover I mean it sucks just looking at the map here there's a 95% chance we're gonna lose 90% chance if you just look at the number of hit points the tanks that are remaining our relative positions it doesn't look good for us right and our, our TD that's in the middle of the map is super exposed he's not gonna be able to exit there without dying right you know, but here, as you can see, I've got that magical 
trifecta of a decent field of vision and soft cover and hard cover and that allows me to do things like oh man so that was a bummer um i probably should have withheld my shot because the tvp was backing up but you know i could have put that t28 pro into one shot territory and then this here is really unfortunate i'm actually getting shot at by their tvp t5051 probably because the tvp our tvp was spotted our vtu and so I, I took shots that were meant for another player so now i've dropped from being two shotable up to be one-shotable by any of their remaining tanks, which definitely limits the flexibility that I have. Uh, it's not totally the TVP's fault. It's just like one of those unfortunate things where, you know, he's he's trying to do the right thing, which is take shots on enemy tanks and using this bush line in front of us. Um, but again, once he started to cross into my field, across the edge of my field of view, I probably should have kept my, you know, finger from taking the shot. Just because what we need now are hit points. We just need hit points in time. Now, what's tough here is, you know, we don't have control of the city, uh, we don't have control of the zero line, and what I really need to pay attention to, and you'll see this later, our team reacts to this appropriately, is what their TVP T50 autoloader does, because that tank is incredibly dangerous. Now, what's saving us right now from just getting pushed in is the fact that the TVP and I can play vision games, and our WZ has a pretty decent armor profile. Right now, really, what these guys should do is push up together on their team. I mean, push up together on mass by kind of like hanging out and occasionally peeking out and stuff. They're doing stuff which favors us. We're the outnumbered team that is kind of you know entrenched in sniper positions, you know. And the, their team has a lot of hit points left. They're just not using it. like they're you know like that T two uh, twenty six E five keeps pushing out in between buildings. You know, it doesn't make sense. He's not going to outspot us. What he should do is move to the buildings on the northern side of the city and get as close as possible and maybe take a run or poke out, but just sort of poking out behind a building so that we get the first shot advantage before his turret even shows. This is not achieving anything, right? And then this tank destroyer here you know, got him in a very exposed high ridge there. And if he knows that we're down here on this peninsula, he has to know we can see him easily. That's not a good place for him to be, right? This is the kind of game, you know, by the way, there, like I said, as a light tank tracker, I don't think that there is much I could have done to prevent the fact that our team is getting our butts kicked. The only thing that might have mattered is going to that E5 hill, getting a lot of early spots on their tank destroyers on the, you know, northwest side of that field. But like I said, that's, you know, fairly high risk if I go there solo, right? One tank or two tanks could easily kill me. And, you know, I, what I've fully learned, you know, I've approaching, you know, Super Unicum W and 8, uh, generally speaking, you know, my my life is going to matter for our team if I can stay alive. Now, okay, this is the big, this is the moment I was talking about. Our Grilla fired, killed their Centurion 7-1, but that means their TVP is immediately going to push around and finish off our Grilla. And thankfully, both I and the TVP hit our shots on their autoloader. That was absolutely huge. And so we've now destroyed their zero line push. They had us, you know, kind of hemmed in. You know, pinch from two sides, but now the opposite tr is true, which is there. You know, three remaining tanks are all in city. And we've got a tank destroyer to the north of them, and then the two of us down here playing vision games. So we went from just being in an absolutely terrible position, being down five tanks and a ton of hit points, to now being in the driver's seat. The main thing I need to do here is just not do anything stupid or foolish, right? And so, for example, we I know the JP is most likely not looking in this direction, but I don't know where their Alpine Tiger is looking, and as it turns out, he's looking right where I am. So, we just got to be patient. We keep these guys lit. Their JPE 100, yeah, he should have been more aggressive earlier. Now he's in a tough, tough position because, depending on where he moves, he's going to be, you know, shootable from one side or the other right he misses that shot um and i decided here at this point i'm going to back up a little bit what i want is the first shot advantage on that alpine tiger you know and if i if i just go and peek around the corner i might be conceding the first shot advantage or putting myself at a 50 50 situation which i don't want to do we like i said we're in a very good position right now this, this is not the time to take a foolish risk right, okay so i can't i just want to see around the corner, you know, using the, the 3D map panning, even though the JP couldn't physically see me, because he's looking my direction, so I can't take that shot. Um, and I, I really like what our WZ is doing now. He knows that he can move down the hill, and because the, the hill ridge is between them, they actually don't have any kind of shot, except maybe over the very top of his tank, and then, you know, I'm able to get in the position here. Our TVP just outshoots me, 
Uh, but that's fine. I, honestly, I don't care about getting kills. What I care about is just winning the freaking game. Like, this has been such a struggle to get to this point. And RWZ, all he needs to do, if he stays high on top of the JPE, now it may seem weird that I'm asking him to spot the JPE, but in this case, he's in the safest position to do so. If I come around the building and JPE is looking this way, he'll have a clear shot on me. Uh, but, you know, just really, the WZ played this, and the TVP especially, for being in a crappy tier 8 medium, they played the last four minutes of this match like champs, you know, and that's like, as, like I said, it, there's, there's situations where you, your team basically has to play the rest of it perfectly in order to win, and that was a really good example, and, you know, I helped participate to that with the exception of shooting the poor TVP when he backed into my um, aiming line of fire. Uh, big thanks to the Nuclear Strategist. He uh, gifted me a Lorraine 40T, so I'm going to be reviewing that. And I appreciate all of your guys' support on Patreon. It's been great so far. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.